March 1973. Edmonton, Alberta plays host to the 44th playdown of the Canadian Curling Championship for the McDonald Briar Tanker. This annual major event in men's curling brings together the nation's finest curlers from coast to coast. Edmontonians are out in force for the opening draw, which even includes a pistol packing Klondike Bell. Something a bit different was served up during the throwing of the official rock. The president of the Northern Alberta Curling Association, Al Williams, gives an unusual demonstration of rock chasing. Forgot your rubbers, eh, Al? In the finest tradition of curling, the competitors shake hands, exchange curling club pins, Then that first slide out of the hack had a chance to get the feel of the ice. As the first draw comes down to the final end, Saskatchewan and Nova Scotia are tied 6-6. Nova Scotia is shot and has last rock. Skip Peter Hope from the Dartmouth Curling Club delivers. Yes, now, hurry. He's trying to plug a wide port to protect his shot rock. He's a little narrow, but still leaves his opponent a tough shot. Saskatchewan needs enough weight to tap the Nova Scotia rock back. Skip Harvey Mazinki delivers his last stone. Whoa! Whoa! No, no, right off! Whoa! It's wide and hangs out. Hurry! 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 But look at this. A lucky rub ricochets him right onto the maritime rock. Sorry about that, Pete. Hope's only chance now is to get a piece of that button. This is Peter's fourth briar. The front end, pull it through the port. He's narrow. Saskatchewan steals one to defeat Nova Scotia 7-6. In this same opening draw, Newfoundland and Quebec are tied 11-all, coming home. Newfoundland skip Jim Ward must draw inside the four-foot. Quebec is lying two and has last rock. Ward makes a great shot. Newfoundland lies one. Quebec decides to go with the same ice. Skip Dave Moon delivers. He pounds light. Newfoundland is still shot. Third, Mike Brennan calls for more protection. The Newfoundland Rock pulls up short, but does provide an extra guard. Moon is forced to switch to the intern. He can raise or draw through the port. He's narrow, and he's light. Newfoundland steals one to defeat Quebec 12-11. Following their heartbreaking loss to Saskatchewan, the Nova Scotia rink is tied 4-4 in this eighth end against Bobby Dillon's foursome from PER. Peter Hope is going for the Islanders' shot rock. 
He gets it with a nice roll to lie free. Seven-time Briar competitor Doug Cameron calls for the hit and roll. Bobby Dillon, playing in his sixth championship, delivers the intern. It bends sharply. Now PEI lies one. With last rock against him, Hope goes for the Rays takeout. He's got plenty of weight on this one. It's a great shot, and now Nova Scotia lies four. Because of heavy ice, Dillon decides to hit for the double and stay for one. It looks narrow. It is, and Nova Scotia steals four, goes on to defeat PEI. For the second consecutive year, the Watchhorn Rink is representing Alberta. Skip Mel Watchhorn is after added protection for his shot block. In this 13th end against Northern Ontario, the score is tied 9 off. And the guard is in there. Skip Don Harry is forced to the intern draw to the forefoot. It's past the long guards and looks good. It is to lie shot. With Last Rock against him, Mel Watchorn must get that white stone out of there and try for a roll. Oh. Oh. He looks wide. But gets a piece of the Northern Ontario stone. Alberta lies one. Again, the Sudbury skip needs that cold draw to the blue ring. He looks a little hot. P.S. slides to the eight foot and loses to Alberta by a score of 10-9. Playing in this sixth end, British Columbia is leading Manitoba 5-2. Manitoba is shot as BC skip Jack Tucker tries for a raise with his last stone. Tucker is wide. Hits on the wrong side and Manitoba still lies wide. Danny Fink needs points badly. He'd like that second BC stone out of there. The raise is perfect. Manitoba counts a big four. It's 6-5 after six ends. Manitoba is lying three in his tenth end. BC has gone ahead again, 7-6. Tucker is narrow with his attempted double. Manitoba lies two. With last rock advantage, Manitoba has a chance for another big end. Pink draws in to lie free. Again, the BC skip is forced to go for the double. There are two ways to make it. But at this point, Tucker will take anything he can get. Except this.
Rod Hunter tidies up the house. Danny Fink delivers. Bernie Sparks worries. And there's no doubt about this one. Manitoba counts three and go on to defeat BC. In the same draw, Saskatchewan and PEI go into an extra end tied 7 off. Saskatchewan is shot and has last run. The island skip Bobby Dillon is after the Westerners shot stone. He taps it back to lie one. Billy Martin calls for wide ice. Harvey Mazinki throws the intern. The front end works very hard, but to no avail. The Islanders still lie one. Protection is the name of the game now. Dylan lays down a beautiful ground. <laughs> Billy Martin puts the broom on the 12 foot ring. <laughs> Harvey looks wide. He gets a piece of the shock rock, but pushes it onto one of his own rocks, and Prince Edward Island defeats the highly regarded entry from Regina, 8-7. As we join this sixth end of an epic battle between Manitoba and Saskatchewan, three ends have been blanked, the score is one all, and the house is empty. Mazinki has last rock and is after a raid. A beautiful shot. Saskatchewan lies one. Danny Fink looks the situation over. He thinks he can come through the narrow port and get the Saskatchewan stone. He goes out to talk it over with third Rod Hunter. Fink is going to go for it. A big shot for the Winnipeg skip. Yep. Hurry! 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 A magnificent effort. Harvey has no choice but to follow Fink through the port. He throws the right. out turn. He looks wide, but is through the port. This kind of shot making is what the Briar is all about. Manitoba tied it up in the seventh, and now in the eighth is lying two. Now Manitoba has three, all cutting the four foot. Martin calls for the double. Harvey's got plenty of weight. Makes the double and stays for second stone. Now the hit and roll is needed. Pressure on both skips has been tremendous in this game. The ice is kept clean. And another outstanding shot by Danny Fink as he hits and rolls to lie two. Mazinki wants to hit and stay. With this weight, he has to be right on the broom. And he is. 
He counts one and goes ahead 3-2 after eight in. And so it went. At the end of the regulation 12 ends, the score was tied 5 all. They blanked the 13th, and now in the 14th, Saskatchewan is shot and has last rock. Pink wants a rock out front so he can hide his final stone. But Bazinki isn't about to leave anything in front of the house at this stage. The hit is made, and how about that for a fringe benefit? <laughs> to hide or freeze, that is the question. Hunter gives plenty of ice. Fink delivers his last rock. The front end feels it's narrow and pound the ice. It is narrow, but taps the shock rock back. It's anybody's guess as to who is shot, but Mazinki, with his last rock, goes for the draw. The intern is bending and looks a little heavy. But it's in there, and Saskatchewan wins a real cliffhanger by a score of seven to five. Bill Good speaks with both skits. Harvey, a rather fantastic finish, 14 ends. But tell me, let's go back to end number 13. What was your reason for the shot you played there? The takeout? Yeah. Well, it, it was a fairly simple shot. Uh, there was more than a full rock exposed, and... Uh, Playing the draw, if we went out too far, it might hang out, so uh, I thought I was fairly safe with the hit, and uh, I just needed a few extra feet of weight, and I'm sure would have got it on the nose. You weren't narrow, you were just a little late. No, I was just a little underweight, uh, and it was just a misjudgment uh, error on my part. Uh, it was actually fortunate I got a piece of it, because I just barely knocked it out of the rings. And then coming down on the 14th end, uh, were you sure just which rock was shot? Yes, we were satisfied that we uh, had the shot rock by at least an inch, and... Uh, we just threw the other one uh, just to make sure. Just to make absolutely sure. That's right. But you had that draw weight anyway in that last one. Well, I just thought I'd throw it in there just, just to make sure. Well, Harvey, congratulations. You've made a brand new briar out of it. Danny, before you come out here, you're sitting with a record of four and uh, four and nothing. Nearly everybody loses a game in the briar these days. You fellows must have thought, well, sooner or later, somebody's going to give it to us. That's right. It's uh, almost impossible to go through without losing one. And uh, with the caliber of curling that is here, um, the winner might lose two. Ontario is shot in this 12th end of their game with Nova Scotia. Ontario skip Paul Savage with last rock against him is trying to add some protection. The game is tied 9-9. He's a little wide but gets a good run. Hope decides to go for the shot rock. If he misses, he should be able to open things up for that all-important final stone. The house is clean. Savage is going to raise one of his short guards. The young skip from the Scarborough Curling Club takes great care with this one. He looks a little wide, but gets a piece of it. The Ontario Rays has left a wide port, and Jim Florian calls for the draw. Anywhere inside the eight foot will give Hope and his Nova Scotians a big win. But it looks hot. 
Slides through the port and right on through the house. Ontario steals one to defeat Nova Scotia 10-9. In the tenth draw, the New Brunswick entry, skipped by Lou Dugray, met the Prairie Powerhouse from Saskatchewan. All members of the armed forces, the Dugray rink is tied three all with three rocks to come in this tenth end. <laughs> Dugray's first stone draws into the fourth foot. At this moment, New Brunswick is the only rink with a mathematical chance of catching Saskatchewan and forcing a playoff. Mazinki throws his last run. But the intern is narrow and wrecks on a New Brunswick stone. A big break for the tough little skip from Chatham. He can pick up two big points here. He doesn't make any mistake. New Brunswick counts two and goes ahead 5-3 after 10 in. With Skip's rocks to come in the 11th, Saskatchewan lies two as Dugray goes for the shot rock. But he's light and narrow. Trailing by two, Saskatchewan needs a big end. With two stones in the house, Mazinki delivers. The ice is heavy and swinging. Ottomachuk and Klippenstein, with an assist from Martin, Pull it into the 12 foot. Get the shot rock and a small roll is the idea now. Dugray delivers with lots of weight. But look at that rock bend. It's past the guard but removes a second stone instead of a shot rock. New Brunswick rolls for second stone. Mazinki needs three counters here to have the edge coming home. He takes his time and throws a runner. A difficult shot at any time, but doubly so when you've got that briar pressure on your back. But he makes it. Goes ahead 6-5, steals three in the 12th to win 9-5. Well, Harvey, you've just beat in New Brunswick, so tomorrow doesn't really matter. You've got the McDonald Briar in your grasp. But looking back on a great week of curling, I think you can look back to that very first game against Peter Hope of Nova Scotia. Yes, Bill, uh, certainly uh, people talked to us before the Briar and said, uh, in order to win it, you have to get those few breaks, uh, those few rubs, and very definitely we got against Nova Scotia to win that game. Uh, I'm sure if I hadn't got the rub, we probably would have lost the game. So that really gave us a great break to, to get started for the week. Well, it's an old cliche that it's a game of inches, and you had two 14-end games, one after the other, and a 13-end game. Yes, uh, certainly we didn't realize that we'd set a record that day, and as a kid of the fellows afterwards, I said, even if we fall flat in our faces, we'll be in the record book, but uh, it wasn't by intention that we played the 214 ends, Bill. Uh, we were playing two fine teams that day. Well, let me ask you one other question, Harvey. Was the competition what you expected when you came here? Yes, uh, certainly uh, if you read the, some of the press reports, you get the inclination that maybe there are only half a dozen teams you have to worry about, but uh, we, we really didn't come in with that kind of an attitude, and, and looking at our games, uh, uh, we had some of our toughest games against some of the teams that weren't supposed to be rated. Uh, I thought it was a very balanced field, and it was very difficult to, uh, to come through, and, and uh, we feel very happy we did. Same thing tonight in your game against New Brunswick in that 11th end. Well, certainly we feel we had an extra little bit of good fortune uh, against New Brunswick because we were two down playing the 11th, and uh, against this kind of competition, you don't win too many of those games, Bill, and uh, we got the big break on the 11th to get the three and uh, come one up. 
coming home and uh, and forced uh, Lou uh, Dugray to go a little wide in his draw. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it when he was short. The Edmonton Police Pipe Band leads the 1973 Canadian Curling Champion from Regina down the ice. Harvey Mazinki, Bill Mark, George Automachuk, and Dan Klippenstein. Edmonton Briar Committee Chairman Jack Moore invites David Stewart of McDonald Stewart to present the tank. For Saskatchewan, the sixth time in Briar history. 